All right, welcome back. Uh, I've got something a little bit different today. We've got a game analysis on a War for Throne 2 game. Um, I know uh, we've been doing a lot of War for Throne 2 recently. We will move on to other things. I've been recently uh, flexing my, my strength at standard four-player chess, believe it or not. I know that'll come as a surprise to a lot of folks who have seen me online and know that um, I'm much more comfortable playing variants. So... Anyhow, uh, this is a it was a two minute five second increment uh, game FFA. It was anonymous, so I've hidden the uh, names of the players there. Um, let's go through and just kind of uh, figure out what's going on with this game. Highlight some cool strategies that happened along the way. So we start out uh, red captures. Uh, believe it or not, from move one. Uh, there is there are some things that can go disastrously wrong for red um, and blue for some some matter and green really yellow is the only one that's safe in the opening uh, but if red doesn't do a capture there um, let's watch what happens takes yellow does something not useful takes now in this situation you think okay well red's clearly lost two pawns but even still he can capture um, or capture, and he's up three points for the two pawns that he, has, he lost. That should be an advantage. It's not. Let's see if we capture blue. Next, we're dealing with a check. Recapture. Now we're down to four checks, and we don't have this crucial pawn that supports this protector of the, of the king there. So instead, let's try capturing green. Actually, that's a worse move. Blue takes. Yellow does something, again, not helpful. Green goes here. This pawn's undefended. This back rank is a big issue. If red does something silly like that, now blue's on the back rank, and he is going to eat up all of these pawns, all of these pawns, attack the king in the end. Red has no hope of winning in this position. So um, out of the opening, red must capture here um, or here. Uh, I haven't quite decided which one's better there, but... Um, yeah, my preference is usually capturing to the left. Anyway, uh, blue attacks yellow. If blue doesn't attack yellow, yellow could, of course, attack, and green's in the same situation that red was facing. So um, blue, uh, I know blue and green aren't really teamed, but in an FFA, FFA game, if you're not working with your opposite, um, the, the other side has the advantage. That's well established. I'll go into more detail with that in a future video. But here, the opening plays out. Um, we've resolved that uh, that crucial opening sequence. There's still tension between red and blue. There's still tension between yellow and green. Um, that's going to be maintained for the time being. We see development, promoting, going towards the center. All good strategies. Um, now I want to highlight this right there. That's the next strategy that we move on to. This king is going to be a thorn in the side of red. Why is that? This king is is preventing the promotion of these three pawns. It's a strategy that has crept onto the market in the last two to three weeks here, and it drives me insane. I don't necessarily use it for my own play, uh, but when a player does this against me, man, it bugs me. Because this king cannot be taken out by red. Red can trade out all of his pieces. He can promote. He can bring kings over to attack. Blue can just as easily support this position. And what does that mean for red? Well, red gets more and more anxious about not promoting these three pawns as he sees the other three players uh, developing in the game. So it drives me bonkers, like I said. Um, this king is a tremendous bother to red. We'll see uh, how that develops uh, later in the game. Promoting, making room in the center for another king. Green is quick to go to the center. Promoting, here we go. Red says, get out of here, blue. I don't want this king here. I want to be able to promote these and not have to worry about it. So he captures. What does blue do? Captures right back and says, you can't get rid of me that easily. What else do we see? Development. Uh, here, green is in a situ similar situation as blue on this side. He's preventing the promotion of these three pawns. What does he do about it? He captures yellow. Yellow is ecstatic to see that. Yellow says, thanks for the free promotion. 
Also, now I can promote these two because you don't have control of that square. So while this isn't uh, necessarily a blunder, we'll see two blunders from green in this game. While this move isn't necessarily one of them, I would say it is uh, a mistake by green. Green has a super dominating position on this square here. He can reinforce that king as many times as he'd like. He can trade it off as many times as he'd like. Um, with that king on this square, yellow uh, is not promoting those three. Anyhow, uh, we see development, promoting, trading, all this good stuff. Uh, red continues to be bothered by that blue king. Um, green and yellow doing some trading back and forth there. Uh, what else is happening? Red, one last attempt. Get out of here, blue. Is blue going to capture? Let's play guess the move. No, he's not. He's going to support that king position. Yellow uh, does some trading with uh, green. It's always a good idea to be mindful of how much you're, how much the other players are trading, right? When yellow is deciding, do I want to trade here? Uh, he's probably keeping an eye on the scoreboard. Six points, uh, six points, thirteen and thirteen. Red and blue are in the lead in terms of trading right now, so he can afford to trade off some pieces. Uh, promoting, promoting, developing. Now and only now, red gets the advantage against blue. In this this time, blue was too slow to reinforce this king, so now he must do something with this king, either capturing here or here, or here if he wants to give red an extra two points. Um, but he can no longer maintain this position. Red has achieved his goal. But look at the cost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven kings were required to take down blue there. All right, we're trading off. Now that uh, this capture is made, yellow anticipates, okay, red will recapture and this king will be attacked by blue. I have a chance, even though I'm still in tension with green, I have a chance to promote and make a break for the center uh, without fear of a capture there and a double attack by green. So that's what yellow does. Green moves in, red captures, blue recaptures, uh, yellow goes towards the center, and we see this. We see red recapturing, blue stepping back to defend the king position. Yellow reinforces his center control. Uh, so does green. Red promotes. Those kings support each other. What else is happening? Oh, did anyone else notice this blunder? When green steps in, this king's hanging. Yellow noticed it. Let's see. You got some more development, some more promotion. This move is a smart one by green. Right now, yellow has an opportunity to expand in the center, should he want to bring more kings into the center, he has an opportunity to. With that move, green says, that's your only uh, opportunity to expand in the center. Um, while we're talking about that, two kings. For this variant, two kings is the optimal number, I think, in the center. Ideally, you'd want those two kings to be on uh, this, the, the center diagonals. Uh, from here, they control 14 out of the 16 squares in the center. Same with here. The only opportunity, let's imagine those two green kings are here. Red can enter here. Yellow and blue can enter there. Uh, they can't expand. They can't get control of the center. No one's coming in this way. No one's coming in this way. Green would absolutely dominate with that position. Um, and given uh, that yellow's here, he can't do that right now. Let's continue. Developing. Promoting. We see a lot of this going on. All right, uh, tension between yellow and green. I think yellow uh, might be going for a quick mate here. Again, this game was anonymous, so you never know. A stronger player will easily defend against this mate threat, uh, or this not really a mate threat, but a, a, an attack by yellow. Uh, but in an anonymous game, you never know who you're dealing with. Red now moves into the center. Leaving an undefended king here. We'll see if that turns into anything later on. Uh, we have, again, yellow and green doing some uh, standoffs here. Green trades. Red moves into the center. Yellow recaptures. Green promotes. That was a blunder, right? This king is supported once but attacked twice. Yellow will easily capture here and win the king. Even if green recaptures, you're trading off a piece afterward. Um, what happens next? Red supports his king in the center, leaving another undefended king on the outside. Blue promotes. Very smart move by blue. He's paying attention to what's going on with green. He knows red is no longer a threat. 
um, uh, on this side. So blue says, well, if yellow is almost forced to capture here, I might as well uh, take this opportunity to promote and not fear a capture from yellow. What do we see? We see a capture by yellow. Another smart move, equally smart play by yellow. Yellow sees this promotion as a threat. He says, well, if I go ahead and do this capture, win that free king, is it really a free king? No, because we see moves like this. Look at this. Green is attacking yellow here. Blue is attacked here. In case we're keeping score, yellow gave up two kings. Um, and after he chooses between these two, uh, he's going to lose... Whose turn? Green's turn. He's going to lose a, a third king. So giving up three kings for two is not an advantage for yellow. So what does yellow do? Yellow says, well, I know I can take a free king here, but I'm not going to be winning points in the end. Instead, captures here and says, okay, green, you get, a, you get, get away with it this time because your partner helped you out. And that's what green does. Green's that, green realizes his blunder and says, okay, I better resolve this. Uh, red now steps in. Now we no longer have those undefended kings. Captures, recaptures, trading. Looks like red and blue are trading off pieces there. Yellow has given up on the uh, attack against green's king. Now yellow is in tension with blue. Will anything develop from that? Let's see. Red making more room in the center. Uh, promoting, developing. Green steps out with the king, trying to get it away from yellow. The sooner green can go over here, uh, the better um, for him. And really, uh, there's not much material left over here to defend if yellow did decide to launch an attack. Red develops. Yellow captures. Uh, not sure what that capture was. Um, you know, it is it is a useful capture. It can't be uh, promotion uh, on the recapture. Blue will step over here and then have to step aside to get this pawn promoted in the future. Uh, I guess maybe just a point once yellow wanted to be at, at the in the lead of, on points. So green's running away with his king. Red's going to the center. Blue's promoting. Yellow's promoting. Everyone's developing. We see a lot of developing moves promoting. Some trading back and forth on opposite diagonals of the board. That continues. This all continues. Green's running with his king. Uh, red's getting a little ambitious, I feel, here. This king is undefended. Yellow could launch an attack uh, without fear of, of blue interfering. But green can easily take care of this by either capturing or promoting. Let's see how green deals with that. Uh, promoting it is, says, I'm not too eager to give you control of this square again, uh, just like blue did, just like green did earlier. We, have, we want to promote those three pawns, so we want control of that square. Red supports. We see some uh, blue steps over. Yellow immediately responds, I'm not going to let you approach my king without a fight. So that's what they do. They trade off. Yellow continues to trade. Red and green continue to trade. Now yellow we see using that same strategy we saw from green. Get out of dodge with your king. Go over here. Blue could, I mean blue's material over here is limited, but blue could ideally launch an attack and yellow would have to invest some time to bring over the resources to defend. So uh, the standoff continues between red and green. Um, now this move here by blue tells red, I'm going to capture you. Anytime a king from outside the center 16 can, uh, can remove a piece or trade off a piece from a king inside the center 16 is an advantage. Um, control of the center is everything in the end game. So um, if blue can trade this off with red, uh, that's an advantage to blue. Red steps in and says, well, if I'm going to have to give up this king, I don't necessarily like trading with my opposite, but if I'm going to have to give up this king, I'd rather trade it with somebody who's already in the middle uh, than someone who's looking to be in the middle. So blue is boxed out here. Blue could approach this way, I suppose. Blue has tried to approach this way. But out of the four players, blue is the only one who doesn't have uh, a stake in the center. Everyone else has already made their claim in the center. Red completing development. 
Uh, red, this is a puzzling move, trades that off unprovoked. It's not like there's any advantage to be gained by doing that. Um, red just trades off. Now, I think what might have been Red's thought process here is he realizes now. He realizes that he's made a grave mistake. He's not going to win this game. One, two, three, four, five kings on the outside versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That could attack this way. One, two, three, four, five. That could attack this way. Red is not long for this game. So Red's going to cash in his points. Maybe hope for a stalemate if he's on this square and that's his last king or really any of those three squares. He can you know, dance around on those three squares and if he's ever captured, uh, that's a stalemate for the red king. He would get 40 points from that. So maybe that's what red's thinking with this trade. It was unprovoked, as I mentioned. Uh, we'll never know. Play develops. Uh, blue steps in. Maybe thinking that he can get a piece of the action between red and yellow, but yellow simply recaptures this way. Uh, blue's not going to make it into the center. Developing, promoting. Uh, now yellow is fully promoted. Green's got one more. Red's got one more. Blue's been there for a while. A consequence of not being in the center and not fighting it out in the center, not trading a whole lot with uh, one of the players on your side, is that you can develop your pieces uh, more rapidly than the others. Uh, red has fully promoted. This is the last pawn that needs, for, to, needs to be promoted. Um, yellow seems to be taking up a position against green. Maybe he thinks that red's going to give him some help and they'll be able to mate green over here. Uh, he's comfortably defending against blue. Uh, we'll see what happens. Red's eager to trade, so he does that. Uh, yellow. Man, if I'm the green king sitting over here with all of my pieces over here against red and two measly kings to support. I'm getting nervous every time yellow moves a king closer in this direction. Red looks for opportunities to trade. Blue now has a path into the center. He will take that immediately. Oh wow, who saw that move coming, right? Uh, red trades with green, yellow steps in. What's the logic behind that move? Well, green could recapture, but he'd be giving up a king. He's just lost two kings. Um, red could capture, but he would again be giving up a king to yellow. Red could capture here. Uh, that's, that might be a consequence. Out of all the different possibilities, yellow says, well, there's a, there's a non-negligible chance that I'll end up being the last king to make the final capture here. So he takes that chance. It's, it's always guesswork. Four-player chess is never predictable, but you know if you have the option to uh, be the last king standing in the middle, you're going to take it. Or if you're a smart player, you're going to take it. What does green do? Green does nothing. Green says, I don't know what's going on here between red and yellow, but uh, I know that whoever captures me is going to be losing a king. So I'm not going to do anything about it right now. Red captures yellow. Uh, um, yeah, red could have captured green. Red could have captured yellow just as easily. Uh, it's It all depends what's going on. Um, 50-50, you know, coin toss there. Blue does what? Blue uh, prepares to bring more support into the center. Yellow steps in now and says, you know what, Green, you thought you were going to be the last king standing? I'm not so sure about that. Uh, now Green's in a position where he has to capture. He can't use that same tactic that he did last time of uh, letting the standoff continue because if he doesn't capture, uh, Red will simply capture on the next move. So, Green captures. Red... Uh, Starts building up his final defense against green. He knows there's not much he can do. Uh, blue gets ready to move into the center. Yellow captures. Green now is starting to see what yellow's plan was. He said, well, maybe all these things over here wasn't so much an attack, but it was building up a defense so that the yellow king can now make a run for the center. Red steps aside. Red says, uh, I'm trading off kings. Um, this game isn't going to turn out for me. Uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta make some moves um, to gain points while I still can. Blue, of course, now has the opportunity to grab some more real estate in the center, and he does. Yellow steps in. Green, uh, you know, preparing to meet yellow's advances here with uh, some defense. 
Red looking to trade. Blue supports his king in the center. Um, green wastes some time. Uh, red trades off. Blue gets ready to bring a third king into the center. Yellow now. Guess the move. What would you play? Anyone who says that is a winner. Um, blue, Yellow knows that with this king here, this king here, blue has opportunities to advance there. Of course, he can't go here, but he could uh, easily... Uh, make room for this third king to come in by trading off with yellow. Uh, not with two kings there. He can't make those advances. Right? These are stopped by those two kings. Now blue is paralyzed in the center. Uh, trading between green and red. Yellow brings further support into the center. Now we've got two and two. Uh, things starting to get a little hairy for yellow. I'm not sure I would bring this king into the center, but, um, you know... It's, it's make it or break it time. We are solidly in an end game. Yellow knows that uh, unless he has control of the center, there's no way this king stands a chance. Trading. Uh, blue is starting to get nervous about yellow as well. Green getting nervous about yellow. So they're going to transfer their power over to these sides to try and stop yellow from getting to the square and likely into the center from there. Red continues to trade with green. Now uh, blue and yellow. Yellow thinks, okay, it's three versus two. I'm not going to be able to hold these guys off. And definitely, even if I step back with these, um, I'm going to be facing pressure from green very shortly. I don't want to be engaged in two fronts at the same time. So yellow says, you know what? Let's trade these off. You'll be left with one king after I trade off these two. Uh, there's not much of a threat posed by one king working alone. So that's what happens. Green, uh, emergency time. Got to stop yellow. Knows that blue's going to recapture. Yellow, again, is in the situation where it's two versus one. He could easily capture the free king, but he'd have to give up this king as well. Uh, red helps yellow in this instance. Remember when I said help your opposites? That's what red's doing right now. Red says, I'm at 58 points. Even if yellow gets to the center, I'll still be in second place, and that's as best as I can hope for in this game. So he's helping out yellow. Blue captures. Yellow is not taking any chances. You know, maybe in this position, green doesn't go for a capture. Maybe green recaptures on red. Uh, so maybe yellow would be safe to capture here. But, like I said, nothing is predictable. It's a coin toss, really. Is green going to capture here? Um, after which uh, we're going to have problems. It's going to be two versus one trying to get this king into the center. Um, yellow's not taking any chances. Yellow says that king was useful to hold up blue, but I'm a lot faster than blue. I can make it to the center before blue can pose a threat of stopping me. Uh, so yellow captures on green, says with a recapture here, of course you're losing this king, uh, but also... There's no way you're going to stop me from getting to the center. So green makes the decision of capturing there. Blue, of course, takes the free pawn. Yellow steps towards the center. Green captures. Red makes a waiting move. He knows his time is done. Blue steps in, thinks, well, if there's anything to be done between blue and green working in tandem, um, I'm going to be there to do it. Yellow captures uh, the free, free king there. So um, uh, a move like this from green, red makes a waiting move, blue makes a move. Again, let's play guess the move. This time I'm going to follow in the footsteps of every great YouTube uh, chess analyzer and tell you guys, pause the video now. What move would you play as yellow? Um, there's one okay answer. Um, there's one really good answer. Um, and there are a thousand and one really bad answers. Uh, if yellow wants to win in this position, there's one move that's a standout. It's actually the move that yellow played. So take a second, look at this position. What would you play? All right. Since you're pausing, I don't need to wait that long. But here's the move. Yellow steps back. Let's look at this, because I, I know uh, a lot of people would say, step in with the king. What happens with that? And again, four-player chess, 
You never know what's going to happen. You can't predict every single move, but the likely response to that here, uh, maybe here. I know we said red's trying to help yellow, but um, maybe red thinks, okay, if I can clear out some yellow, there is a chance. So red could step in. Uh, blue would crucially here give a check. So this king has lost. Um, you know, with a move like this, uh, it's it's more or less game over. Check. Uh, red can take whatever. Check there, and the game is lost for yellow. So uh, where were we? We were on that check. Yellow could also capture here. Green recaptures. Look at this. Green is controlling this square now. Yellow can't make it in. These two kings working together will again checkmate yellow on the outside in no time. Uh, so we're here. Yellow could go here. Watch what happens. Red, uh, well, green takes the free pawn. Red could give check. Um, blue must support this king. If blue gives a check or, or counts on green to give a check, does anything else, red recaptures uh, and is king of the hill. So blue must support this king. Probably would be a move like that. Yellow has to recapture this king. Uh, has no escape, so has to capture. Green could, let's say, give check. Uh, red could move towards the center. Blue would uh, most likely step up here. Again, yellow can't capture. Yellow can't do anything except this move, after which we see a move, any move from green, any move from red, and checkmate to blue. Uh, now blue is winning. Yellow is in third place behind red. So anyway, that takes us all the way back to where were we? This move, when everybody said yellow should make a break for the center. No, yellow doesn't. Yellow steps back. Now when green makes this move, it's not an attack. We'll see if that was worth uh, that calculation pays off for yellow. Again, nothing is certain. Nothing is guaranteed. This could play out in any number of different ways. But this move, I believe, is the smartest move of the game. Um, watching this game, when I was watching it, Yellow took a minute and a half, two minutes to make that decision. And it was the right one. Uh, red can't do anything. Blue is shuffling towards the Yellow King now, and only now Yellow makes a break. He says, well, I know there's going to be a check here or here, but I'll be long gone before uh, before anyone can do anything about me getting to the center. So, green attacks yellow, red steps aside, blue gives that check that we were looking at, yellow now can comfortably run to the middle, no threat from either of these uh, three pieces. Of course, green takes the free material, uh, red w makes a waiting move, blue you know, makes a shuffling move, it's all over from here. Yellow moves to the center, wants to avoid any check from uh, either of those two kings. Waiting moves, waiting moves, waiting moves. Yellow steps aside, making clearance for promotion there. Waiting moves. Red could do something like, you know, this to prevent King of the Hill, assuming that blue and red are now working in tandem to shut down yellow, but that doesn't work. It's three versus three. Um, even with the move order advantage, yellow makes it to the center um, in any of those variations. <clears throat> Blue, uh, not ready to give up yet, even though it's completely lost, uh, sacrifices a king. Green makes a waiting move. Red makes a waiting move. Blue recaptures. Yellow recaptures. Green makes a waiting move. Red makes a waiting move. Blue takes the free material, uh, putting him in... Well, I guess he was already in third place. But he takes the free material, and yellow gets to the center. And the big reveal, look at the four players here. We had, well, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't obvious by uh, by the fact that I'm showcasing this game, I was playing yellow here. Um, not to be arrogant about, oh, you know, it's the best, smartest move of the game. But, uh, yeah, I objectively... Um, this was really solid play, really solid defense from all three other opponents. Of course, we had a, a strong 2100, we had a 2300, um, and a 1600. In this game, um, 
I was very surprised. I was playing against Green and thought, okay, you know, he's making a couple blunders here and there. But he was playing very well. I thought 1,800, 1,900, even 2,000 level play. Um, but we had a 1,600 in green playing very well. So thank you to my three opponents, GG7654, BPV24, and Paper2007. Uh, a very well played game. Very good strategy being employed by all the players. And, uh, of course, a fantastic result for me. Um, equally good for these two players, and the 1600 there has a lot to be proud of. Played a very well-played uh, well played game. So, anyway, a longer video. Sorry for that. This is actually my third time going through this analysis. Wanted to make it as quick as possible for you all. Um, if you did, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you guys again soon.